OK. Um, so these identities here I've, I've given to you as the fundamental identities, um, because pretty much every other trig identity you can think of can be derived from these. Right? So everything else is, is derivative of these ones. Um, I'll list a few of the most common identities that you can derive from these. I'm not going to do them all, because um, there's, there's, you know, you can come up with, with hundreds of identities, you know, you just play around, you can come up with all kinds of identities, right? And, um, you, might have, you might have done a unit on, on this in, in high school where you spend time, you're given all sorts of different identities and you're asked to show that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. You probably won't have to do very much of that in your calculus course, but you might need to make use of identities to simplify certain problems, right? You might have equations with trig functions in them that you need to solve. Um, or you're just trying to simplify things because it makes it easier to evaluate a derivative or an integral or something like that. Um, so some of the ones that you're going to run into, there are the ones that are derived from the Pythagorean identity um, that give you relationships between the other trig functions. Um, right? So if you, if you take the Pythagorean identity and you divide everything by, by cosine, um, you get, well, cos squared over cos squared, you'll get 1 sine squared over a cos squared, you get tan squared, okay? And then one over cos squared, well, one over cos is secant squared, so you get secant squared x. Um, similarly, you could divide everything by sine squared. Cos squared over sine squared gives you cotan squared. Sine squared over sine squared is one. And 1 over a sine squared is cosecant squared. Okay. Um, probably won't see these too much in Calc 1. Once you get to Calc 2, when you're doing uh, some techniques of integration, you're looking at trig substitution and things like that for integrals, uh, you're going to see these quite a bit. They're going to pop up all over the place. Okay. Um, the ones that show up throughout calculus quite frequently um, are these double angle and half angle identities that you can derive from the addition formulas usually by, say, setting x equal to y or something like that. So we have ones like um, if we do sine 2x, well, keeping in mind that sine 2x, right, what is 2x? 2x is just x plus x, right? Um, so if you put x equal to y in, in the identity for sine of x plus y, you're going to get sine x cos x plus cos x sine x. So you just get sine x times cos x twice. So what you get is 2 sine x cos x. Um, and this identity is a good reminder that you can't just take that 2 and bring it out front. There's a lot of people that are always tempted to do that, especially once you get to things like limits involving trig functions. A lot of people want to bring that 2 out. The 2 doesn't come out. It's stuck inside the sine function. If you want to bring it out, you can, but it's going to cost you a cos x. And for other multiples, 3x, 4x, 5x, it gets a lot more complicated. You can keep using this addition formula repeatedly and keep expanding, 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 and get more and more complicated formulas. Um, but generally, that turns out to not be all that worth your time. OK. Um, now, using that same idea in the identity for cosine, we're going to get cos x times cos x, so cos squared x minus sine x times sine x. So cos squared x minus sine squared x, right? Um, with a plus sign, you just get 1. Uh, with a minus sign, it's not quite as simple. You get cos 2x. Cos squared minus sine squared, same thing as cos 2x. Um, but there, there are a number of different ways that you can sometimes write this identity, right? So if you write this cos squared as, as 1 minus sine squared, if you plug that in, right? Solving for cos squared there, I get 1 minus sine squared. If I substitute that in, another way to write cos 2x is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Um, if instead I leave the cos alone and I say that sine squared is, is 1 minus cos squared, and I remember to push the minus sign through the brackets, 
then I can also write this as 2 cos squared x minus 1. Um, and these can be useful because these lead to these so-called power reduction formulas. There are times where you're dealing with a, um, an odd power, or sorry, an even power of sine or cosine. You go to sine squared or cos squared in some equation. You want to, you want to lower things down a bit. Uh, especially when you're getting to integration. In integrating even powers of trig functions, the only way you can deal with them is by playing around with some identities. So if you take this equation here, cos 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared, and you solve for sine squared, um, you get that uh, sine squared x is going to be, so I'm going to move the sine squared to that side, move the cos to that side, uh, 1 minus cos 2x, I've got to divide by that 2. Uh, similarly, cos squared x, right, if I move the 1 to the other side, cos 1 plus cos 2x, divide by 2, 1 plus cos 2x over 2. Okay. Um, so these, these so-called power reduction formulas, those come up, um, again, when you're getting to integration problems, you'll use those quite frequently. They, they come up um, more often than you might think. Uh, the other place where you might use them is simply that you're trying to calculate, let's say you know, you know sine of pi over 6, and you're trying to come up with sine of, let's say, pi over 12. Well, if x is equal to pi over 12, then I would have a cosine of pi over 6 over here, which I know. Right? And I can take the square root of both sides to work out the value for, for sine of pi over 12. So sometimes you're using these identities just to get uh, values of sine and cosine for angles that are not those standard angles on the unit circle. Um, they can come in handy for that as well. Um, probably most frequently where you're going to see these is, is once you get into integration. Um, you might have to do these to simplify integrals. In Calc 1, maybe you're going to use them to try and simplify some equations involving trig functions, like you're trying to figure out where a derivative is equal to zero. Um, maybe it's going to come in handy to be able to write sine 2x as 2 sine x cos x to try and simplify an equation. Um, you might see something like that as well. Um, that's, uh, that's it for our, our pre-calculus review material. Um, from here, we're going to move on to calculus videos.